welcome to our expert talk this week. As always, very excited to be with you guys and have someone absolutely awesome coming on as every single week. Um, really, really looking forward to this one again. Um, her name is um, Chantal Girardi and she is an award-winning Facebook strategist today. Who is with us? So, Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. There we are. We have our Facebook strategist who is uh, good with technology and, and <laughs> has no problems to jump on like this. How about you? Good. Thank you. How's everyone? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we're excited. Um, very we're excited. We're jumping on now. So, yeah. Yeah, very good. I'm hoping to um, get a lot out of it and I'm sure we will. Um, but for those who um, who don't know you yet, Chantal, if you just give me a couple of minutes, I um, give a little little introduction for you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so for everyone out there um, who doesn't know uh, Chantal yet, uh, let me tell you a um, uh, little bit more about her. Chantal has a diploma in social media marketing and is an award-winning Facebook strategist who empowers businesses with the skills and strategy to grow their business using organic Facebook. Now that's Facebook using Facebook without ads, but she makes a big point about that and that's what I really love about it too. Um, Facebook saved her business as well and as, as we just said, she's talking about free Facebook, right? She went from a broke business owner in a new country with three kids under five years old to now abundant in business using organic Facebook. She now empowers business owners who have no marketing budget to create an income producing strategy using Facebook stand out, get found, generate and convert leads, create compelling content, sell your products or services, monetize your groups, run successful events on, or, or, or networking events and all using unpaid Facebook. Nominated top 100 coolest companies in Australia in 2018, Empowered Mum Small Business Winner and nominated in the Gold Coast Girl in Business in Telstra Award, which is quite cool. She is passionate about helping businesses gain Facebook skills to su succeed in their business. So here we are on Facebook and talking about Facebook. How good is that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, do you, what does it feel like um, hearing all of this? Um, Chantal, does it sound good? Does it make you feel good? Um, I love it and it does make me feel good because I remember a sure. time when I started out in business and I felt terrible. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when I first started out and I was so overwhelmed and I was so stressed and I was so frustrated and I didn't know where to go and I didn't know what to do and I thought that I had to throw like so much money behind everything and when I did it failed um, and people kept saying, you know, you've got to try this, got to try this and I was really uh, I was really um, at actually the best way to describe it is I was crying constantly. Um, and I don't, when people meet me, they go, you, you don't look like a crier. And I'm like, people on the Gold Coast will remember me like for a whole year or two, I just cried. I just would not stop crying because I, I just felt you. terrible. And now I, I just um, love what it is that I do. And I love being able to help people that um, possibly feeling the same way. And I just want to save them from that. I just want to, be that person that's going to, um, you know, help them overcome that as quickly as possible. Love it. Love it. Isn't it um, often, often interesting how um, uh, the people we help or like our idea client or avatar or whatever we want to call it is often our self 1.0? Like yeah, 100%. Because uh, we know that often. person. <laughs> exactly. We know it well. And we know that person well, right? We know the struggles that person's going through and um, has been going through. And, and also what, um, we're also confident about what can happen because we experience that change ourselves, right? And um, yeah. that the whole journey is there. And I see that so often with um, the, the people in the group, right? So the therapists, the health coaches, the, the life coaches, um, it's often they have a, had a health issue and have been through that. And from there, they've found this new modality or this new way of getting better. And it's like, I have to get that out there, right? I, I have to somehow share this with the world. And um, that's great segue to um, uh, maybe your story. Um, I know your story is quite, um, uh, yeah, um, quite interesting and um, uh, different and um, yeah, sharing. And I know you, you, you're happy to share your vulnerability 
vulnerability a little bit as well. So um, can you just um, tell us, Chantal, um, what's been the story in, in short? Uh, sorry, just is freezing a little oh. bit. So we'll just wait and oh. see if that sorts itself out. Yeah, it's all good. Um, Look, all good on my end. Um, should be should be fine, I think. Just freezing a little bit. Okay. There we go. It's better now. Yep. Better. Cool. Sorry. Did you hear my? Uh, just yeah. say that question again for me, please. Yes. The oh, just or... your story. Like, what's um? Sure. How did you get to sure. what you've been doing now, or what you're doing now? Sure, hundred percent. Well, the, I love what you said because when you spoke about the fact that you know people who get into the wellness industry generally something has happened to them, so or a family member or it's something close to their heart, and this is why they're so passionate about making a difference. The problem is, is that they're passionate. Um, they're not. Pro they're not the problem, but they're passionate and they love what it is that they're doing and they want a result, but they're not good in business, and that's the difficult part. They're not good at business. They're not good at you know, managing their finances and they're not good at all the stuff that comes with being a successful business owner. So these are all things that have to be learned along the way. And because it's um, service-based, many people don't value it. So they don't believe they should be paid for it. So that's, an, that's another thing that obviously people have to overcome because they just want to constantly be working for free. So I'm sure that's something that you deal with. But my story is, is that um, I was obese up until the age of 20. So I actually got into uh, personal training at the age of 20. I was a school teacher living in South Africa, and that's how I got into the personal training industry. Then when I moved to Australia, in South Africa, I knew everybody. Everybody knew my story, and I knew everyone. Um, so I was well-supported, and I had my own gym. But when I moved to the Gold Coast, there's a personal trainer everywhere. Um, at that stage, I think it was 30, it was my mid-30s. I was old, <laughs> mid-30s personal trainer on the Gold Coast. Nobody knew me. I had these three kids under five and now trying to start a, a business that was saturated on the Gold Coast um, and really didn't know how I was going to stand out, reach more people, especially with these children. And I needed to grow my business and I needed to grow it fast as well. Um, my husband at the time, uh, he wasn't earning a lot and um, we really were reliant on the income um, and we weren't residents as well. So we didn't get any benefits at all. Um, And moving here as well, the children got a lot of viruses in that because of the change in environment. So, uh, you know, I really was at a, at a breaking point. And running around wasn't really an option. Uh, you know, becoming a sports model <laughs> um, is not my thing. Um, I was a triathlete in South Africa, but, you know, I had help there. So I was able to go and train 30 hours a week. So here I couldn't do those things. Um, and what I soon learned was is that Facebook is a fabulous way to um, – increase your exposure, reach the right audience, uh, find people in your area, you know, improve, uh, get your personal branding out there and your messaging, messaging out there and it's free and you can sit on your bum at home and do it. So um, basically I taught myself Facebook out of pure necessity um, and within three years I had one of the biggest personal training businesses on the Gold Coast. Um, and within five years, I had my own health, wellness and fitness center. So the, the health, wellness, and fitness industry is obviously something that I'm incredibly passionate about. But what happened with the health, wellness and fitness center was, is that I had all these other people renting space from me and they never had any money. <laughs> so um, they were renting space. We're always struggling um, and basically didn't have, you know, many business skills, didn't have any many uh, marketing skills and didn't have a marketing budget. So I started to run these meetups called Health, Wellness and Fitness Entrepreneurs. Um, and each week, everybody used to come and we used to help encourage and support each other so that we could be better in business, um, support each other, collaborate and grow our businesses. And again, I used Facebook in order to get more people to these events. Um, but what soon happened was I started having everyone else on the Gold Coast coming to the events because um, obviously it was a much needed, a much needed um, thing that I was offering. Uh, many business owners just didn't know how to market themselves and there was no one really teaching people how to do that. Um, so within another three years of that, I ended up uh, closing my health, wellness and fitness center. Well, I actually went into partnerships, so it became another side business, but I got, I, I got rid of the actual facility itself because I was coaching. I was doing so much more coaching and helping other business owners um, and really started becoming really, really passionate about it because I'd been there. I knew how it was and just really wanted to help other people. Yeah, I love it. Wow. 
Cool, cool. What I'm, what I'm, um, what I'm instantly thinking right now, what I want to know, and I'm sure everyone, people who are watching want to know as well. You said you started an event and we all know we love workshop. We love putting up meetups and all this stuff. And then we can kind of get devastated if nobody shows up or maybe not as many as we yeah. want to. Right. So, um, if you would, um, give maybe like, um, if you, if I would ask you now, um, you know, what would you do to get people there? Like what, what's something that I can do um, as a sure. business owner to get people to my event? What would the answer be? Okay, so can I answer the, <laughs> it's not quick, it's not, it's not a quickie, but it's going to be a goodie, okay? <laughs> okay, um, here we go. You will, yeah, you will get a happy ending. Um, so <laughs> basically, if you're wanting to have an event, firstly, you have to make sure that the event is something that people want, Okay. People have to want it. If they, they, they're not going to come to it, there's so much out there, they're not going to come to it unless they want it. So firstly, the event has to be something that they want. Uh, it has to include, you have to solve a problem that they have, okay? And they have to know, like, and trust you already because they're not generally going to go and support an event unless they know, like, and trust you. So in order to know, like, and trust you, you have to have an online presence which is consistent. The key messaging needs to be consistent. Um, it can't be confusing. It can't be fluffy. It needs to be very specific about what it is that you do, uh, what it is that you're offering, the problem that you can solve. The simpler, the better. Because as, as entrepreneurs and as people and um, online, we all have shiny light syndrome. So we're always looking everywhere else. And we go, I'll go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. I'll go to the next one. So it's not just a case of having an event. We have to make sure that you've built trust, that people know who you are, um, and that you've already that you've already started to evoke curiosity in the online world. And I mean, for me, I'm talking about online because obviously that's how how I do it. So you have to evoke curiosity. Uh, you've got to um, already start having people interested in what it is that you do. So then you go right. Guess what, guys? I know what problem is that you have. I'm going to solve the problem. This is how it is. Then you would obviously go then and set up the event. And I would at least do six weeks, at least six weeks for an event. And then I would start to, you know, share that event and, uh, again, evoke more curiosity and show some of the things that you're going to be doing in that event, which is going to solve their problem. It's, it's not the... Um, it's not actually fixing the problem, but more the result that they're going to achieve at the end of it. So uh, one of the things is um, identifying with the pain of your ideal client. So showing them that you understand the pain that they're in and that at the end of it, this is how they're going to be feeling because that is what's going to compel people to actually opt in and come and support you. Um, you know, event is, is a huge thing because it could be location dependent. Is it uh, time and day dependent. It could be uh, what, you know, what time of the day, what date are you going to choose? Is it going to be online? Is it going to be in person? There's so many um, variables, but the number one thing that you need to do before any of this is to have a strategy. So what is it exactly that you're hoping to achieve by having this event? People just want to have these things, but what is, what is the end result that you're looking for? Is the event the end? Like, is that the end? Is just getting the people there? Because then you're possibly going to have to have a whole lot of other stuff in the lead up to that to get them to that big priced offer thing. You know, another thing you're going to consider is, are you going to pay for it? Aren't you going to pay for it? Because if you don't pay for it, you may not attract the ideal client and they may not value it because it's unpaid. But if you charge, if you charge for it, you know, what type of client are you going to get? If it's a low priced event that you're charging for, are you then going to attract your high priced client? So there's so many things that you have to consider. Um, and, you know, I always say location is one of the hugest things because depending on the location, for example, I had a massage therapist. The massage therapist was in this tiny remote town in Sydney. There were 20 other massage therapists there. And it was like, there was only like a thousand people living in this little town. Like, it's going to be incredibly hard if you're all marketing massages. You have to come up with a niche. Um, and Sebastian, I saw that post that you did on yoga and I loved it 100%. Niche, niche, niche. Has to be something different. Um, so, yeah, so as far as events go, the number one thing is you have to have a strategy right at the beginning to go, what is the end result that I'm hoping to achieve and how are we going to get there? Know, like, and trust. Make sure we're solving their problem. Make sure that um, 
we are t that our key messaging is consistent. So not just the branding, but the key messages, so the words that are coming out of your mouth are consistent. So there's trust. Showing um, social proof and credibility. So social proof is what do other people say about you? Because people don't only want to hear what you say about you. They want to see what other people say about you. So sharing success stories, sharing um, testimonials, um, people want to hear those. Um, and then credibility. So what credibility do you have? Um, only in the last year out of my three years of being a Facebook strategist, only in the last year did I actually get my diploma. Um, and now I always say I have a diploma in social media marketing because it's a credibility. There's many people who don't. So if you are registered, if you're insured, if you've got 19 years in the industry, that's credibility. Um, and you want to use that credibility because that's going to help earn people's trust. These are all things that are going to get people to say yes to coming to an event. And do you suggest... Um, and you so, have to get those yeses from them. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm imagining is what you could do is like, first of all, what I hear is reverse engineer, right? So, so what's yeah. the event for? And from there, build, you know, that, that kind of um, that makes everything else fall in place. So if it's the end, then obviously uh, the marketing for it, the whole lead up to it needs to be much bigger. Uh, or is it maybe like a stepping stone to something like a, an, a, a program that you offer on the event or the next step towards the program that changes the event type, how your structures and so on. Yeah. And so, so I have the testimonials, the, the problems, the, how, how I, how, the outcomes, how I feel. So could I kind of create that um, and, then, and then share little bits of it to create that 100%. curiosity that, you, that you're talking about as in the leader? That is about... Yeah, 100%. That's going to be collecting um, all the interested people along the way. So like I said, six weeks out is generally a good time. And then you can start showing and sharing all those little bits in the lead up and collect them in the event. So you set up the Facebook event on, on Facebook and there's an option there where you could, people can click that they're interested to, in going to the event or alternatively they can click that they're going to the event. Okay. Again, the event needs to say exactly what it is. It needs to say if payment's expected or not, if it's online, if it's location, because those are all going to, um, that's all going to determine whether or not a person is actually going to come to the event. Okay. And then you take that event and you can share it and you can share it into groups, obviously only if, it, if it's within the group guidelines and you have to remember Facebook etiquette always. Um, so I always say that. So don't spam. But if, you, if people are actually interested in what it is that you're offering, it's not considered spam. If it's actually going to help someone, it's not spam. So not if you bad. take that event then and you actually then go and share that and you go and put it in front of your ideal client and go, hey, listen, I'm doing this. Show the statistics, social proof, credibility, the outcomes, what's going to hope to achieve. But what you have to remember to do as well is that you've got to tell them what you want them to do. So many people don't tell them what they want them to do. You have to say, click going to this event so I can follow up on you. Click interested if you're still considering attending this event. You might say, nice. subscribe here to this landing page so that I can send you um, some updated information. Purchase your ticket here. Go onto our waiting list here. Register here. So with social media, because we all do that, it is important that we actually tell people what to do. Um, and like I said to you, Sebastian, when we spoke one-on-one, -on -one, I'm from South Africa. We always tell people what to do. <laughs> so, um, and Australians are not quite the same when it comes to that. So when I say that, it sounds a bit weird, but it's actually just prompting them, instructing them what it is to do um, and making sure that all the relevant information is there. It's not the time to be fluffy or to just leave the door open when there is an event, it's the time to say, this is the process that I want you to follow if you're genuinely interested in doing this. And then when you follow up on them, people appreciate it. So what will happen is in to, the event, yeah. That, that comes back to what you said, you know, it should be for people you already have built know, like, and trust. Right? So those 100%. people that, that, that won't feel offended by that. And I love how you said, you know, um, you, you got to have these call to action and spam. it's okay to share. It's not spam.
exactly. So really big mindset shift there, guys. Like this is so important. Yeah, love it. Yeah. If you just focus on the fact that you're solving somebody's problem and you're really passionate about doing it, um, then it's not spam. Now, one thing that you said earlier, and I just want to reword that for you, <laughs> is, is that you said um, reverse engineer from what the event is. Now, what happens is, is that people generally set up an event that they want to have or they think that somebody wants or needs. Okay. Um, just checking if the signal's there because it's a bit stuck. Yeah, it's all, all right, good. Are you there? Yeah, the... Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, it just went a bit dead my side again. Oh, good. Um, so what happens is people go, oh, I'm going to have an event because I want to do it on this. And they do what they want or they think. Now, the thing is, is that many coaches have, like you said, they've come from somewhere and that's why they do what they do. But they've forgotten how they felt right at the very beginning. So in their online marketing, when they're running events and retreats and workshops, they start to run what they think everybody needs, but it's usually for where they're at right now. And they've forgotten that there's usually something beforehand that needs to get them there first. Okay. So for example, I use the gym as an example. Okay. If you say to somebody, um, cause I work with, with many gyms and they always go, a new client comes in and they walk in and they, um, um, I'm thinking about joining the gym and this buff personal trainer goes, that's awesome. We're going to put you on a diet. We're going to take away your food, stop you from drinking alcohol and coffee. Then we're going to make you do like a thousand burpees and whatever. And, and people go like, what? and they crawl out of there and go, no way. Okay. <laughs> so they forget that when they first started, okay, they were so scared that like, it was so scared just walking into the gym and even considering embarking on this journey. All right. So then if you just go back and you just think about yourself beforehand, there's a step that has to happen beforehand. So when I work with the gyms, I always say to them, you've got to bring them in for their first session mustn't be a training session. Yeah, I'll give you a free PT session. These guys are so scared. No, come in. I'm going to show you around. I'm going to check at your posture, see how flexible you are, ask you about some of your goals and see how we can help you. Okay. Yeah. And that's the same thing. So many people come to me and they go, right, I'm holding a retreat. I'm holding a retreat. I want it in Bali and I want the whole world to come to it. And I'm like, why don't you start with the people that you know? There's all these people that know, like, and trust you that have been working with you for years. Why don't you look at what these people need right now in a retreat and form a retreat about what they want and what they're going to say yes to. And let's start there. And let's build from there. I love that like, because oh. one, of, one of, I love that because one of my questions when you said it before, um, you know, uh, when it's like, uh, I create something that people want, where do you start? And I think that and you just answered that beautifully. You start by who you have in your network, who's, who, you, who trusts you already. And, and you ask them. Or think about that and it's like, hey, what would you think about that? Do that with 10, 15, 20 people. And like, would you be interested? Yes. And when you actually put it together from there, you can then go back to them. It's like, hey, you showed interest. Would you like to come? But what wonderful way of, of getting that done. So that, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, and seriously, that's one of the biggest things is people are just wanting to reach so far out of their network. Um, that they're even trying to go into different countries and like going, no, I want to, I want to market my services in American. I'm like, well, what, what gives you the right? Like they've probably got someone in there that's doing something. Why don't you start with your next door neighbor and give them the best service ever and wave to them every day and say hi. And you, they remember you and they know you and they like you. And then they tag you and stuff and they share you. Yeah. Do you know that I've been in this industry now for three years? I only market and, and look after the Gold Coast. And I work with people worldwide. So you catch people everywhere. But I actually only focus my online marketing to the Gold Coast. I'm talking about organic. I don't do any paid advertising. Mm. And I was just thinking about that. Now we've been talking all about the events. And I think it's been so great. Like it's so much valuable stuff. And guys, I know you're, you're all sitting there watching. I can see you're, you're watching. And um, I mean, look, 
I think you may have not no questions, but um, we probably have to come to an end here now. If you do have any questions around the events and stuff, at least put them in, but uh, in the sure. comments so we can answer it afterwards. But I know there's so much more. We talked about free um, advertise, uh, free um, uh, marketing, free online marketing through Facebook, and I know there's so much more you may even want to t talk about. Um, but I think. <laughs> Um, we, we, we really um, gave some great value here. You gave some, so much great uh, value on, uh, on that specific um, uh, thing that you can do and uh, what you can really make work through Facebook without a massive advertising budget. And that's uh, extremely valuable. And I, I myself got so much out of this right now. I mean, the biggest thing really is for me that I thought, wow, it's so true, you know. Have I actually recently thought back two years ago what I was needing back then? Or am I just thinking about what I need right now and create from that space? So that's, that, that's just gold. That's, that's really, really a great advice from Tao. So, so thank you so much. Um, to finish it off, uh, for everyone uh, who would like to uh, know more about you, Chantal, who may uh, want to know all the other things that you have up your sleeve, um, <laughs> what can they do? Um, so in, in a link that I maybe can share under the video or something like that? Sure, 100%. Look, the best thing to do is to jump onto my website, which is www.chantelgerardi.com.au, but we will put in the comments because it's a mouthful. And then, um, and then from there, obviously, we can also share my Facebook page. So the best thing to do is I keep up, there's up-to-date tips on both the website and on the Facebook page when they change the algorithm, when there's a new success story, when there's um, a, a new problem that people are having, um, I share it all in there for you. So, um, yeah, no worries. Happy to connect. Um, if anybody does want to look at working together with me, um, I'll offer a free 15-minute call. We have a chat and just see, see if we're a match. And you can all see <laughs> what can happen in 15 minutes. I mean, it probably didn't take us much longer um, uh, than 15 minutes of you just talking about it. We haven't watched the time, but <laughs> 15 minutes can really make, make a big change. So I love it. So thank you so much, um, Chantal. It's been uh, um, so good. Um, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.